In this fifth video on tips from Ali for curator tuning, we're going to revise the last tile, which is review building blocks. Let's actually click in there, some introductory videos. Let's go here. And the important tip from Ali here is don't try to cover this all because it's very hard for you to get the information and, and it's even harder to get this current because, for example, Windows servers may change quite a bit. But the ones that are most important for the rules, and they don't change often, are these three. DHCP servers, DNS servers, and LDAP server. So these three do not change that often and are very important for the rule. Maybe mail servers you can add it because typically they don't change that often either. And you see here the, the ports that are actually checked in it. Now there are two places where you need to check those. One is the traditional uh, building blocks. That's the way that Curator started. And here we see the test definitions that are typical of, you know, uh, for example, DHCP servers, and you get the actual syntax of every one of them in here. And don't lose sight that if you want to see which rules actually use these, well, it's you know that the Use Case Manager app has a section for checking on the rule test. So if I go here on the test definition and I just pasted that and click here apply, I, I get that that rule. Load basic building blocks and we can actually see the syntax of that particular rule. Let's go back to the review of this. And so that's the, the host definition, the building block. And then there's the more modern reference set that is called host reference. And as you see here, you can also check into the test condition for this, but these are tables that you can kind of more naturally modify by going into the admin tab and click here on their reference set. For example, if you're looking for the DHCP, just type there and that finds it in there. As you see, I don't have mine populated because this is a demo system, but this is a reflection of the tuning that you need to do to make sure that when a rule looks into a building block or a reference set looking for whether these are DHCP servers, that you can actually know that your rule will fire when it should be and not when it's not supposed to. Another part that you may actually want to look in here is this VA scanner. Notice that there's no uh, uh, reference set for it on the host definition and is this building block host definition VA scanner. And actually, I just noticed that this, I got this uh, duplicated in here. And this is was something that I put, apparently I put it twice, when I use QReader's QVM scanner, I want to make sure that it doesn't fire on, hey, I noticed that, that something is scanning your network. Of course, it is It is my my own legal scanner. So you should add in here, in this building block, the IP address of your Nessus, Rapid7, Qualys, whatever is the scanner that you actually use. Actually, this duplication is not going to affect my false positive, but it's an um, unnecessary logic to have. So let me actually go ahead and fix it while I'm here. I can delete this too because it's a duplication. I do finished and I need to reload this page for this to be uh, updated. Also in all these and almost all the tiles you have that dependency tree. You see it's asking me for, uh, for doing a refresh. That dependency tree that is actually very used to see what depends on what, right? If I reload the page, that double condition uh, goes away. One thing that might be useful in here is to use the asset database and use the feature of server discovery. And if you have flows, you can use this to search by virtue of the ports being used to see whether there are other, uh, for example, DHCP servers, right? You can actually say that, well, based on all the flows that you have seen, 
and you can make it specific for a part of the network. Again, this has to do with the network hierarchy that we mentioned before, right? But I'm making it here for all. You can actually go and say, go and look quickly into all your flows and see if you find any DHCP server. Now, keep in mind that sometimes uh, if you have something that is blocked, this in particular, these are my ring cameras here at home, so this, this actually makes sense. They get DHCP, uh, but they have a DHCP server for all of them. But it might be that you may have something that attempts to use the port that the DHCP server uses and gets blocked. So when you see it in here, you may want to actually look in the flow data and look for specific traffic to make sure that the that there was actually some back and forth traffic. So it's a real DHCP server, not something that attempted to talk to or to become or to, to pretend to be one of those. Okay. And don't forget that that if you were to let's say that I want to prove this one, for example to be a valid uh, DHCP server, because I know it is, the minute that I click here, approve selected server, it goes into that building block, okay? And if you want to modify any one of these building blocks in the traditional way, you can always go under offenses, go under rules, select here from the pull down menu, building blocks, and when I search for VA scanner, I have that, uh, that building block and notice that it has the address of my curator system in there. So same same data, same thing from both ends. So I hope that these uh, five tiles will help you get your offenses instead of being this you know number of pages of unmanageable thing to go little by little, say once a week and make sure that you get to tune your system. And at least once a month, you should go back and review your network hierarchy and, and make sure that you know things are really only alerting you when there's something that is worth being investigated.